prepared. Hopefully you guys are prepared because you're listening to these two idiots on YouTube. We are outdoorsy people who now have a YouTube channel. Yep. The Southern Draw. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Roll the film. With the upcoming election in November, I could see the aftermath getting a little chaotic, depending on whoever wins. So, what can the everyday person do to be prepared for the results and chaos after the election? Well, personally, what I'm going to do is just have everything in my house stocked up from food, toiletries, toilet paper, anything that I may need just to prevent me from having to leave the house and make any unnecessary trips. Now, to be fair, I live in the southeast part of the United States, so I don't foresee any big, you know, protest, civil unrest, chaos, anything like that. Um, so, <laughs> it's just keep going. Going, going crazy. So for me personally, probably nothing's gonna change. My everyday routine, I'll just do it like I normally do it. You know, if I go to Walmart, I probably have 0.01% chance of running into any, you know, protest groups or anything like that. But for the person that lives in New York City, Chicago, Minneapolis, you know, you may need to be a little bit more prepared depending on what may ensue. So, you know, I'm not saying go buy 3,000 rounds of ammo and a pallet of MREs, you know, just common sense stuff that the everyday person can do. What do you, what do you think? Uh, no, that's true. I think, I think COVID sort of made it a point that uh, a lot of us are prepared if the supply chain or common grocery stores shut down for whatever reason. So yeah. I think it'd be a great idea, especially the toilet paper. Man, that one caught us uh, off guard for sure. But uh, like you said, no, I think, <laughs> I think being prepared is something that a lot of us don't think about too often. We sort of uh, live in a world that's pretty safe and controlled and uh, usually not, re not prepared when something does get crazy and it is election season so election year yeah. yeah of all the things that could shut down a country i did not have toilet paper as being the thing that people were just gonna just lose their mind over absolutely uh, you know it's, it's, starving to death compared to wiping your butt i mean that's i would have never thought it but more of the story cover your ass buy some toilet paper that's exactly right so <laughs> you know the prepper community you know you always think of the overweight guy in his basement with just shelves behind him with just you know cans 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 just yeah. 30 years worth of food but he can't go run you know 20 20 minutes on a treadmill sure. that's a stereotype not everybody's like that so don't get offended but the prepper community had their biggest win when the pandemic happened because they were like i've been telling y'all this was going to happen and look out there the, the stores are empty people are in the streets riding like why haven't y'all been prepared? So it's not, you know, out of the realm of possibility to think that, you know, you could run out of food in a grocery store and you have, you need some extra on hand. So hopefully everybody's seen, and I know they haven't, that having extra on hand is a good thing. And, and you're not a crazy person or a conspiracy theorist just for having a couple months of food on hand, you know? Yeah. And, and if you pay attention to American politics, whether you're on the left or the right, it's a sort of a bipartisan agreement that whichever side wins, doomsday is coming and the world's ending, which it's obviously overblown. But if you ask either party, the other is going to ruin the world at all costs. And so, yeah, I think an election year is just a great time, sort of like a mini preparedness drill, like a pandemic that we don't have often, but it's something to think about. And the other three years, we don't really think about it. But um, yeah, no, I think preparedness is something that we need to educate more people on for sure. Yeah, because we've had it so good in this country and the fact that you can go to any grocery store in any city in any state and it's usually full yeah. there may be a few empty spots on the shelves but the shelves have stuff any store any city any state so i mean with that you get lulled into a sense of false security well not false security because it's always been the case but you just mm -hmm. get you have that in your mind well there's always going to be something there well if the trucks stop running it's going to empty pretty quickly you know yeah. so it's just so important to, and I'm not saying to have two years worth of food on hand like that's a costly thing if you're buying freeze-dried or if you're just getting your beans rice you know non-perishables two years worth of food that's a hefty price not everybody can go out and do that but two weeks I mean start there then go to three weeks then four weeks so it just compound it slowly and you'll be surprised how quickly it'll add up
you know. Yeah, I think an idea, like a, a test case you could do is if the power cuts off and you cannot leave your home, how long can you survive? Yeah. Starting now. Ready, set, go. You know, so there you go. That's a pretty uh, way to test your preparedness, and I would say. And, yeah, if you could survive two weeks, I think that's a good baseline to start. There is a lot of upkeep and storage and maintenance when it comes to having, like, long-term preparedness long-term storage especially if you live in an apartment that may be hard to do right. so uh yeah if you could strive for two weeks make it on your own you know you may be just eating canned tuna or whatever for two weeks but that, that'd be a good benchmark to start at for sure right he's digging <laughs> ash doesn't believe he, can swim <laughs> he doesn't think good. he can swim but he can so maybe even more importantly than food is water so like we mentioned earlier, different parts of the countries have different needs as far as your uh, resources, water, food, energy. So in the south, we have creeks, ponds, rivers, lakes all over the place. So water is not, it's important, but it's not critical life and death. Now, if you live in, you know, the Midwest or even some of the desert regions, Nevada, Utah, something like that, water, you, you, need, you need to stock up on water more than you may need to stock up on food because you can't go, you know, get a five gallon bucket out of a pond and then uh, sanitize it and cleanse it. So water is definitely the most important, you know, I would have a month's worth of water before I even start worrying about my food because you can, you know, what they say, three weeks you can go without food three days without water yep. but basic rule of thumb so yeah and, and the flip side in a more urban area is finding sanitary water yeah you know, there could be all types of tanks or access to water but uh, the sanitation is a big one and lastly we have energy so again uh, geography dependent if you live in a very cold climate you got to have a way to heat your house so with that, whether that be extra firewood propane whatnot you know think about this in, in ahead of time so when we had that uh very cold weather in texas a few years back like a lot of people died in their houses because they froze to death like living in alabama again i can never think about that because it's never gotten to that point where i'm like wow i may die of the cold but yeah. in parts of the country that's a reality that people face every day so you know think ahead be prepared you shouldn't be hearing this from the first time from a guy on youtube telling you this i mean people should have that in their heads to like man i got to be prepared but you'd be surprised at the amount of people that just go day to day don't even think about like what what does next month what could happen definitely it's like you said if you look at the statistics like life expectancy murder rates and all that pro are probably the best that they've ever been but you know you watch the news either net any network for 30 minutes and you're out like on freeze-dried food websites ordering three-year supply because you think the world's about to end tomorrow so keep it all in perspective do your own homework research you know again don't listen to two guys on youtube who know nothing basically but but are prepared yeah <laughs> we i mean more than two weeks and i think the, the the highlight is is the world is a much safer place and we're bringing more people out of poverty poverty every day but we are more reliant on each other everything's interconnected and so independent independence is very important and that's something that's kind of slipping away you know it goes without saying like knowledge woodsmanship type stuff's going away yeah. also but uh I think uh, surviving independently, you know, whether it be you have no power for two weeks or you got to live in the woods for a year, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's nice to have have some uh, survival books maybe on hand. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of knowledge and just preparedness is, is very important, but we're kind of yeah. at this point. But yeah, two guys on YouTube who will live longer in two weeks for sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, something I've heard is society is three meals away from collapse. Like, it's very fragile. When people who are not prepared, hopefully you guys are prepared because you're listening to these two idiots on YouTube. So when the people who are not prepared, when they look in their pantry and it's empty, they're gonna start thinking, wow, I'm gonna have to do something to get my next meal. And you know, that's when it goes downhill. So yeah, I've done a 24 hour fast. And I would say by the end of that, I was ready to, you know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get my next meal. So yeah. <laughs> I would hate yeah. to see a whole town or whole city yeah. on that same page. Yeah, yeah, so that's all we got. If you have anything to add, leave it in the comments below. Tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. We love to interact with you guys, negative or positive. So let us know, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, hey, real quick disclaimer. We're not some crazy conspiracy theorists or mass preppers. We're just sort of pretty outdoorsy, informed voters. Okay. You can just like hold it. Oh, yeah.
coming in. That's probably like Blood blowing it up. Or, like hold it like that. Yeah. yeah. I would. I don't have my hat on. So I'm like put it on my <laughs> right there. <laughs> I'll just put it back where it was. All right, we going. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. I was gonna come up with. I was trying to do funny, but I couldn't get anything. <laughs> Okay. Ash, get over here. Too bright, yeah. I don't 